Fashion is nothing if not a matter of taste, and when it comes to certain garments, there's no pleasing anyone. Style is of course cyclical, but many of this year's most talked about trends are things we thought would forever remain in Fashion's Room 101. These items have the power to make almost anyone shudder. Now is the time to take a moment to assess what is really going on in your closet. We have curated the most hated clothing items of this century. Hi guys, my name is Uzo Makao Kebu. I'm a style coach and founder of Anka. My name is Olivia Arokui. I'm a fashion and lifestyle blogger. I'm a content creator and I'm a brand and fashion coordinator for Style Concierge. This is Chuck Daniels. I'm a beauty and portrait photographer. Today on Spice Most, we'll be talking about the most hated clothing items. And this is Spice Most. Speedos. Women's swimsuits have stolen the show for far too long. But men's togs deserve some attention too. When a man wears a Speedo, he is not just wearing a bathing suit or ready for a swim. He is actually wearing a Speedo. Although Speedo is technically a brand with a full range of performance-based swimwear, which is synonymous with its tight, revealing brief. There is no statement making quite like a Speedo statement making. When a man wears a Speedo, it's a thing. Do you guys know what Speedos are? The hideous briefs they're like blood sucking yeah and guys wear them a lot and it just has everything on show and that's not cute i don't even think there's a way to wear speedos to make it cute so speedos are just a no-no so speedos i think um if you used to watch baywatch and the rest they used to wear a lot of that like the guys they used to wear a lot of that like um on tv i've never actually seen any guy wear it and i think it's hideous um I would never go out with a guy that wears speedos to the beach or anywhere. Clothing is way more than what we just put on our bodies. Clothing defines people, clothing defines lifestyle, clothing defines fashion, it defines even a specific time. For me, I personally do not even seek speedos as, as a clothing item on my possible list or anything. Speedos will only be wearable for me on a sporting, um, a sporting activity, probably swimming or something. I don't think I would ever wear that to a pool party and I don't want to see a guy putting on speedos coming anywhere around me like, bro, give me some space, man. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. Leather trousers. Leather trousers have long been a favorite of those in the fetish and kink scenes. Those folks at least had the decency to limit their wearing to the dark and dank sex dungeons where they so rightfully belong. For the rest of us, leather trousers defy all reasoning and can even make black seem like a loud color. I absolutely love a good pair of leather, leather trousers. I think they just make your legs look very nice and rounded and toned. And if you have a bum, Leather trousers are your absolute best friend. Like they just make everything look like, like in place. I like I don't have a pair, but I really, really, really like leather trousers. And I think if you have like nice long legs and a nice curve, then you should definitely get a pair. I think they're really cute. If you have, it gives you like a, a nice bum, and I don't know, it brings out all your curves and everything. I've seen people wear it a lot, so yeah, I think I, I like it a lot. Nigeria is really too hot. I be, Nigeria is really hot, so you can't really wear leather pants and really get away with it like that. But yeah, I like them. I think they're great. In the 21st century, that's a gen gender sensitive clothing item. Because while it works for ladies, I don't think um, leather, leather trousers works for guys. No. For me, it doesn't work for guys. In, probably in the 90s, it was a thing. Um, then I, I remember a video of Nas. Um, nastrogenic or something like that, then where he put, had all leather clothing items and it worked for him, but in the 21st century, no, leather, leather trousers don't just work for guys. Crocs. Like a pair of shower sandals that crawled out of the sea, mutated and broke out of their laboratory, Crocs seem to have spread to all corners of the earth, terrorizing innocent bystanders with their crimes against good taste. Whether or not their popularity can be accounted to people who consider plimsolls to be formal wear, what we do know is that Crocs must still hold the record for the most signally lazy footwear choice of all time. Sometime last year I started seeing Crocs around and for me I thought it was just a rubber footwear you just put on during the rainy season or something. But those footwears are ugly but there's something about the colorfulness that really works but it's not something you'd want to put on for a less casual outing. I think they're cute because 
Rihanna wore it. So anything Rihanna wears is fucking cute. I, I don't think I'm allowed to swear, but yeah, whatever. So um, I think they are really, I think they are really comfortable. You, you don't have to wear it everywhere. You can't actually wear it everywhere. But I feel you can make it fashionable. I don't know why people hate it. I don't own it, but I think if I own it, I'll actually really rock it and I'll style it really well. So yeah, I don't mind it and I don't love it. I only like it because Rihanna. Atrocious. No, no. If you're going to the grocery store, wear a pair of slippers. Have Yana's. I mean, go to the Malam. Like, those slippers are better than Crocs. I feel like... Crocs as a fashion statement is just a very comfortable way of not wearing trainers. It's a very, very lazy reason to wear comfortable shoes. So, no, Crocs are not allowed in your wardrobe. Flares. Flares are easily the most iconic example of Retromania's most bland and thoughtless excesses. They are rightly an object of ridicule, and when a piece of clothing is most commonly worn as a part of a fancy dress outfit, it should warn right-thinking members of society to stay far, far away. Do you guys know what flares are? Flares are like anything that sort of like comes out. I love flares. Like I like trousers that are sort of like hung up of my ankle and they just flare out. I think that they make you look really retro and really like cool you know so if you're someone that's not very comfortable with like the way that your calf looks so instead of wearing like fitted or skinny pants you could just wear a pair of flares and then i don't know rock them with heels same with your skirt same with your dresses whatever that has a flare you know if you just want something that adds a little bit more character to your outfit i'm 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 all for flares so flares are good for me yeah i don't like it i really don't like it i got it from a store and it's just been hanging in my wardrobe. I really don't care about it. I think they should, I don't know, they should just stop making them. I don't know. I don't like them. They don't do anything to your body. It just builds up. It's like, I don't know. Nah, we should cancel it. So yeah. Flares, there's something about flares, also called bootcut anyway. There's something about flares. Flares make you understand that fashion is actually not predictable. Flares have had their time where they were in vogue and they had their time when they were not in vogue. They, like, they come and then they go. So we can't predict when next flares will be coming. Like in the 60s, flares were a major clothing items. Everyone wore boot cuts. It was, it was the in thing where you wore boot cuts and then you had probably had afro then or something. And then it left and it came back sometime in the 90s and it left. Everyone thought it was over for boot cuts. And then sometime around 2005, boot cuts was a thing, but it was a brief reign anyway. And then it left. So who knows where next we'll all be putting boot cuts on. Elbow patches. Elbow patches are the middle-aged equivalent of a pair of ripped true religion jeans and instantly make whatever garment they are attached to appear as if someone has died in it. If you're a librarian, professor, or the owner of a bookshop, this does not apply to you. Who invented them? Why did you invent them? Why did brands pick it up? Why do men wear it? Why do, no. Elbow patches are like um, the smallest things, the smallest tweaks you can make so a clothing item that really makes a big statement. Um, you can actually use elbow patches to turn a very formal looking blazer to a very casual outfit. So um, actually they work for me with blazers, but I don't think they work with sweaters and other clothing items. I, I, I won't really do that. Elbow patches, I don't hate it because my dad has this jacket, which I now own, which I'm going to rock and he has like the patches. And I think he bought it like in the 19, I don't know, 1980s or so, because I wasn't born then. So I just took it from his wardrobe and I'm going to wear it. So that's why I like it. I don't mind it. I think it's really stylish, to be honest with you. I think elbow patches are really stylish. If you know how to rock it well, it's really, really stylish. I do not hate it. I think it's, I think it's actually really fashionable. And yeah, it takes a certain type of man to wear um, a jacket that has elbow patches all right guys we're about to go on a break until we get back don't forget this is spice most hated clothing items track suits track suits are only acceptable when worn by sportsmen stay-at-home parents and should not be worn for any occasion more formal than answering the front door to accept deliveries yet some people continue to misguidedly see them 
as the cornerstone of casual wear. Um, track suits. Track suits go with everything. And, but you have to really be careful about track suits so you don't get to the point where you abuse them. Because you can actually put track suits on with denim, you can put them on with, with shorts or whatever. They actually go with everything. Well, you have to be really watchful though. They could actually turn to your everyday outfit and you wouldn't even notice that. So um, I do like them, but then again, I wouldn't want to abuse them. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like it. Not like I don't like it. I, I feel um, some are actually really cute and it can be fashionable. But when you see guys and girls that wear it every day, it's just irritating. Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't care about it, so yeah. I'm not a sporty person, so I'm kind of in the middle with this one. I feel like when I see like ladies wear them when they're traveling, I think it can be quite cute. You know, like if you have like a suit, like a, a set, so like, you know, a nice colorful one, like white, pink, I think that can be really, really cute. And then when the guys wear it, look, I just feel like if you're not buff, don't wear a tracksuit. But if you're buff, yeah, bring it on, bring it on. Red trousers. Whoever wears red trousers appears instantly like a ventriloquist by trade and unfailingly draws the eye to the lower half of an outfit in a way that should be obviously objectionable to even the least conscious amongst us. As you can tell, I like a nice color. I'm wearing a pink suit today. I love, love a pair of red trousers. I think that the most important thing is the fit. If it doesn't fit you right, don't like just don't bother because you can get away with a black like black pants or blue plant pants looking a bit ill but red trousers are so statement and they literally draw the eye to what you're wearing so once you get a nice fit for your body type then yeah i really like um, a pair of red trousers now red trousers bro that's a very gender sensitive trust me i i wouldn't put on red trousers like what do they even go with for guys i mean ladies could put on red trousers and really look cool Put on red trousers, I, I don't know much, but probably a pink or a peach or whatever cloth of whatever color of um of blouse or something. But then again, for guys, that doesn't go. Guys, please don't do this. Red pants are really cute for girls. Like I have I have red palazzo pants and all. But I think red trousers is they're like a no-no for guys. I don't think I don't know. If you're a guy and you wear red pants, I'm sorry, do not attack me. But nigga, why? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I'm a, I want to say something about guys that wear red pants, but I'm, I'm not gonna say it, I'll keep that to myself. But yeah, I think red pants for guys is ridiculous. Uggs. There is perhaps no fashion item with the title so appropriately steep in the onomatopoeia as the Ugg boots. It looks like a cross between a slipper and a ski boot and denotes a look which has not had a single thought go into it except fluffy. Uggs seem to be falling out of favor with those who ever considered them fashionable. One thing's for sure, the sight of them has not lost any of their power to horrify. Mm, I know this is not a clothing item we'll be very familiar with in this part of the world. I mean, it looks so much like winter boots anyway, but then again, they look big and they look ugly, but they really fulfill their purpose anyway. At least they are very good for cold, cold climate regions and all of that, and then they feel very comfortable but no, I don't really think it's something we put on in this part of the world. Not something I would put on as a matter of fact. Um, I don't think, I, I, I don't own one. I've never worn it before. I've only seen it on TV. Um, if you've ever seen Just Delicious, Tracy and Olivia, they used to rock it back then. It was really cute. And this was like 2010. So if you're still wearing it in 2018, you need a reality check. Like, I, no, I know it's really comfortable. It keeps you warm blah 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 but nah i'm gonna give credit where credit is due they are the most comfortable like pair of boots you would ever own they're very comfortable very squishy you literally feel like you're in bed when you're wearing them but they're really ugly to look at so the best place to wear them to is like to the library or in your room or where people are not gonna see you <laughs> I think they're really expensive, first of all, for, but I think that they really keep you cold because you can't wear them in Nigeria. I feel like if you're abroad and you need something to keep you really, really warm, then you can wear a pair of Uggs. But if you're like a fashion babe, uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure about that. So I'm, I'm like half and half with Uggs because I did wear them when I was in uni, so I can't now come and form that they're that bad, so yeah. Deep V-neck t-shirts. 
There is something intrinsically smug about a man in a plunging V-neck T-shirt. It is often sported by men with a cardigan or some other piece of boating chic apparel, often to show off the use of a gym membership. It also often seems favored by men possessed of the kind of volume of body hairs usually found on great apes, which isn't doing its reputation any favors either. I think it's really cute. I have I have like a couple of them in different colors. Um, I think it's really cute for girls. You can wear it with your bralette and just, you know, pair it up with things. Go, wear it to probably like a friend's party or house party. You can make it stylish. But for guys, um, nobody wants to see your hairy chest, you know, like, nah, I, I, I don't even want to see your chest in the first place. And then you not see all these lanky boys wearing it. You're not even buff. You know, you don't have muscle and the rest of them and you're wearing DV next year, who sent you? Nah, brother, mm -mm, let's not do that. So, nope. Now for guys, I think to, rip, to rock that, you really need to have a ripped shirt, chest or something. You really need to have a ripped body or something and then you're consciously trying to show that. Unless, I don't see why you should be putting it on. I, I, I wouldn't put that on actually. And for ladies, you need to have an amazing cleavage to put that on. So for me, it doesn't work for me. So I wouldn't put that on. I wouldn't wear that. But like the really deep ones, like, you know, those ones that just go like. OK, for a girl, for a lady, for a femme, I think, yes, go ahead with it. Wear that lacy bra, let everything show, stack up your necklaces, but also choose where you wear it to. You want to wear it to dinner or under like a jacket or just in a way that you want to exude more sensuality than you would during the day. But for a guy, no. No one wants to see your Coco Pops. No one wants to see your, you know, your chest that you pump to the gym. Just keep it classy. Like, so for a girl, yes. For a guy, no. Sweater vest. Coming in at the bottom of the most hated clothing items is a divisive sweater vest. While we would argue that there are more than a couple of occasions to pull off the sweater vest, it can leave anyone looking in search of a golf course, and when worn over a white t-shirt, its capacity to appall decent-minded folk increases exponentially. Well, I have to be straight. I wouldn't put that on. That looks straight up nerdy. Like, it looks, it looks nerdy, absolutely nerdy. It's what you put on and then, you know, you know that kid that gets bullied in the class? I, I just wouldn't put that on at all. Um, I have a friend that still wears that to work. If you ever get to see this or watch this, you know how I feel about that. And I think in some countries, it's actually really stylish. You can wear it and go for your polo club, um, take um, golf with it or wherever you want to wear it to. But I feel like, I don't know, I don't know, nah, I don't like it. But if we're going to play um, golf and you're my man, yeah, you can wear that, but you, you, you can't wear that to go out on a normal day. You know, it's not allowed, so. The name alone is a problem. Sweater, vest. Like, it's either you're a sweater or you're a vest. You being like a hybrid of two clothing items doesn't, I don't understand it. And also, they're always made out of this really weird wool fabric in like odd colors like gray and black. Oh, interestingly, I think like all these fancy people that live abroad that go to like country clubs and things like that can get away with it because it's really, really nice. But I don't know, I think it's a really tricky one. For a girl, it's definitely a no-no, like absolute no-no. For a guy, I think, yeah. Mm, but it's quite tricky, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. All right, guys, it's a wrap, and we finally come to the end of Spice Most Hated Clothing Items. Hey, guys, my name is Olivia Aroque. Um, I'm a fashion and lifestyle blogger. I'm a content creator. I'm a dressmaker, and I'm the brand and fashion coordinator for the Star Concierge. Between choosing your designer, who's going to do your makeup, whether you're going to do your nails, how to sew your ashwabi so that you outmatch the other ashwabi wearers, or just deciding what to wear to work. Like, I know it's a hassle. I know it can be very, very tricky. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you learned one or two things. Yeah, I think I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget, you're watching Spice Most Hated Clothing Items.